I'm Christian Kailai, and let's talk about the historical revolution of epidemiology. Epidemiology is roots are nearly 2,500 years old. Epidemiology thinking can be traced from Hippocrates through John Grounds, William Farr, John Snow, and others. Let us start in circa 400 years. So the first person here is Hippocrates. He attempted to explain this is the current from rational viewpoint rather than supernatural viewpoint. He wrote an article entitled On Airs, Waters, and Places. And in this article, he suggested that environmental and host factors, such as behaviors, might influence the development of disease. And then in 1662, another person involved here is John Grounds, a London Haberdasher and a councilman. So his work is the landmark analysis of mortality in 16. So in the, this work, he quantified patterns of birth, death, and disease of occurrence, noting disparities between males and females, high infant mortality, urban and rural differences, and seasonal variation. In 1800s, William Farr became the father of modern vital statistics and surveillance because of his work. So he considered collecting vital statistics, assembling and evaluating those data, and reporting to responsible health authorities and general public, which is, is still used nowadays. In 1854, John Snow became the father of field epidemiologists because of his work. So he studied cholera outbreaks, both to the discovery and prevention of this occurrence. So he considered both descriptive epidemiology and analytical epidemiology for him to come up now with prevention and also uh, different causes. Okay, so now let us consider the work of uh, John Snow. So what he did was to determine the area where the cases or where the uh, patients live and where do they work. And then after that, because um, water can be a possible source now of infection for cholera, he also identified the location of the pump. So we have here the pump A, pump B, pump C, and all other pumps within the vicinity. Now, the next, the next thing is that he analyzed now the map, and he noticed that there are more cases near pump A. So he conducted a field investigation and based on that investigation, he found that, that the people do not use pump B simply because they think that it was contaminated. And then he also noticed that in the in this part of the, or the east part of uh, pump A, there are few cases. And again, based from interview, he found that, that the reason is that there are other stores like the zip well. That's why they do not get water in the pump area. So now the site of pump is now called John Snow. This is the second investigation conducted by John Snow, wherein he considered the two water Supply. So table 1.1 and table 1.2 shows the mortality from cholera in the district of London supplied by the two companies, while table 1.2 shows the mortality from cholera in London related to the water supply. So with this study, he was able to show that in conducting epidemiology study, Water is now a vehicle for transmitting cholera, and that epidemiologic information could be used to direct prompt and appropriate public health action. So let us continue our historical evolution. So in 19th and 20th centuries, so another um, epidemiologist in the name of Dahl and Hill conducted a study linking lung cancer to smoking and the study of cardiovascular disease 
among residents of Massachusetts. Here are the pictures of the person behind epidemiology. So we have here the picture of Hippocrates, John Ground, Jen Snow, Hill, and Dub. Moreover, in 1980s, epidemiology was extended to the study of injuries and violence. In 1990s, they also considered molecular and genetic epidemiology. While beginning in the 1990s, where the, the terrorist attack dated September 11, 2001, the epidemiologists considered not only natural transmission of infectious organism, but also spread through biologic warfare and bioterrorism. Thank you for watching this lecture.